So before COVID, my family traveled a lot, and we were very privileged to do that. Um, but during our travels, we never realized, we never stopped to think about how we, even like as a country in Canada, we have a steady supply of clean power, and we've never stopped to think about other both developing and third world countries who don't either have power or don't have like clean power. So I wake up and I grab my computer and I turn on my lights and I have all the Wi-Fi and the power that I would ever need to go on the online classes. Could you imagine a place where you wouldn't be able to turn on your lights or plug in your computer when it dies or even have a computer or Wi-Fi? I've been thinking a lot about this and the global goal that the UN has set to bring the cost of renewable energies um, down so that third world countries and uh, developing countries have access or more access to cleaner power. Even in Canada, initiatives like Bullfrog Power have been started where individuals can pay more for their electricity, but Bullfrog Power would take that money and invest it in cleaner energy. But what about the rest of the world? I've researched three different places that were very heavily reliant on fossil fuels and coal, um, but in the last couple of years, they've switched over to be 100% renewable. Starting closer to home is K2 XI Axis. Kisisu XI Axis is a First Nations community located in British Columbia. They've gone completely green and use a number of different renewable energy sources to power their community, including three wind turbines, a small hydro plant, and a 23 kilowatt solar panel. In 2021, they are also adding hydropower to their mix of many already renewable energies. By doing this, they will cut their GH emissions by almost 150,000 tons and it'll allow them to become almost 100% renewable. An incredible story for a community that has been on diesel for the last two decades. This also shows us the need for the government inter intervention because these projects were made possible by a $25 million grant from the BC government. However, it was well worth it when you consider the environmental and health impacts for the community. And now we move on to our next really cool place. This place is called Findhorn Eco Village and is located in Scotland. Since the village was founded in 1989, they've been using renewable energy. They have several wind turbines that generate approximately 750 kilowatts of power alone. They also have solar panels installed on almost every building in the village. It has been deemed one of the cleanest places to live on the planet. Houses in the community have become more expensive, but for good reason. They have been insulated in a way that they hold heat and cold air for a very long time, reducing the number of times that they would have to use their energy systems. Welcome to the land of fire and ice. Iceland is the last stop on our journey through three incredible places that have made renewable energy affordable and available to their citizens. Iceland is lucky enough to have the world's largest geothermal footprint because it sits on the edge of two tectonic plates. They have been able to tap into the incredible energy of the Earth itself. Iceland in the 1970s was considered a developing country. They heavily relied on oil and coal and only used geothermal to heat their water for baths. The difference with Iceland is that it wasn't just their government making the decisions. The whole population came together and made a decision to stop using oil and coal because it was costing the country too much money. Their solution was likely one of the best ones ever to be made by the country switching to hydroelectricity and their very own energy right beneath their feet. These three examples demonstrate that it is possible to meet the goals of the UN commitment to affordable energy for all. I truly hope to see more of this technology in our own neighborhoods in the near future and all around the world because everybody deserves access to energy. But it has to be clean energy for the health of our planet.